Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Osage United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. For announcements this morning, I wanted to remind you that we are collecting for these our boxes today. Did you bring them? Yes. You did. Just your one. 
There was more you could have picked up, Jean. Oh, I'm so mean. <laughs> you could have picked more up, Jean. <laughs> Dean and Joni came on Friday. They, Dean and Joni picked up three. <laughs> you love me, Jean. You know that, too. Um, Tuesday, I will be at, back at Norris Springs Nursing Home. Unless uh, They did have a COVID case last week, but everything was fine. I filled in for Sue Simmons out of Norris Springs, but so this week is actually my um, week to go. We do have our sock sale Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I will not be in the office Friday, but uh, Luann, do you still need volunteers? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what time does it start Friday? One o'clock. And I need to be there at what time? Okay. Use uh, the north door. North door. All right. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd. Have anybody been there on the first Friday or the first day of that sale? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Um, and then remember, starting today, welcome to October. Uh, we're collecting our winter jackets for the youth of our Osage schools. So if you have any gently used uh, jackets or want to buy a brand new jacket, um, bring them and we'll get them distributed. Uh, because again, a lot of kids lose their jackets in the middle of winter. Are there other announcements to lift up? I do. This is before I say that. Thank you for all coming last Sunday night to our uh, fall festival out at the Berkeley's. Um, I think the 50 of us that were there had a good time. And can I pick on you today, Nari? Not publicly, just privately. Um, Nari wants to continue this oh, once a month. Okay, okay. <laughs> So if anybody wants to pick that up and plan once a month, you're welcome to do that. Um, but I thought it was a good time to do it, and uh, there will be some things coming in the next couple of, well, probably next month, maybe a game night here at the church or a movie night. So just watch for those in your uh, spire. So any other announcements this morning? I have one. Mabel? Chair. That was Helen's. If anybody could use it, you're welcome to look at it. Okay, like a recliner lift chair type? Yeah. Okay. If Mabel, if you didn't hear that, uh, Mabel said there is a lift chair available that was Helen Tubbs's. So if you are um, in need of one or would like one, call Beth or Mabel. Yeah, call Beth. Okay. You don't want to take those phone calls? No. Okay. Any other announcements this morning? Then let us turn our attention to why we are here. And let us focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Before we get to our call to worship, and before we stand, or you can stand as you do it, I want you just to kind of do a popcorn shout out of what you are thankful for. We're not going to do anything with it. I just want you to say it. And then we will go into our call to worship. So I'm thankful for the wonderful weather we have this weekend. I went to the last tour of those small chapels of Iowa. There was five of them on the east side. We got to see three and two in the distance because if you are an avid hiker, you needed to climb a few bluffs to get to the, those two that I didn't actually go see. So yesterday was a lovely day and um, that, that chapter is now closed. I've seen them all in Iowa. Cool. Babies. 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 I saw that. Congratulations. Church family. Wife.
those things that a lot of other people, both in the state and internationally, don't have. Any others? she got home so I didn't see that win they were behind when I turned it on so yeah I'm gonna have to watch those last few minutes <laughs> dad texted me at 10 30 last night the Hawks win yep okay and I went back to sleep <laughs> All right, let us stand and join together now in our responsive call to worship. And we do give thanks to God for all those blessings in our lives. And we turn to him today knowing that we are coming together to this communion table this morning with all the Christians and those who celebrate across the world as it is our World Communion Sunday. So in the midst of war and division, we wait for God and we wait and we come. Let us be God's communion, for the needs in the world are great. The Lord will increase our faith. So come with love and wait for God. The steadfast love of God never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. During change and uncertainty, come with curiosity. We are one body, one planet, one church. Come with hope. Knowing God's steadfast love endures forever and come to the table. As we gather with the bread and the cup, justice is served. Let us worship. And let us do so by turning to our opening hymn, number 207. We have come to join in worship, verses 1 and 2. has begun. 
Know that you are forgiven through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and be at peace. Amen. And Jesus 
ask them a question back, and they had to think about it because they said if they answered one way, Jesus would say, well, then you don't believe. And if you answer another way, then they're going to say, well, then that's, it, it's not, you know, it's not from God. And so they didn't answer. They just said, you're right. And Jesus said, um, this is why you don't ask these questions because you can't come back with an absolute answer when it comes to God. So what he's trying to basically tell us is when something happens to us and it is through God or through Jesus, we have to take it and be okay with it, you know? So you can ask your parents all the questions you want but they may not always have those answers either. And I don't always have answers. They have asked me questions out there that I don't always know the answers to. And sometimes that's okay to live with not knowing because that's where our faith comes in and that's where we believe. So, will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we come to you today and we thank you for helping us kind of understand why we shouldn't always, we shouldn't question you. That what comes our way, there's reasons for it. Lord, we thank you for guiding us and helping us build our faith stronger. And Lord, we just ask that it continues to grow and be nurtured by you and our family and friends and our congregation. We ask for your blessing to be upon our children here this morning and those not with us. Protect them and guide them and give them the strength to go out and share your love with others. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming forward. So today we still are in Exodus. I think I said we're probably here maybe one more week. Next week we get to learn about the Ten Commandments. And then we jump into the New Testament. So today we're learning about Moses striking a rock and water comes out. And so let us turn to that scripture in Exodus chapter 17 verses 1 to 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, and as the Lord commanded, they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do for, these, for this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel and he called the place Massa and Meribath because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. And let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we come to you today and we ask for your Holy Spirit to just be here in this space. We feel the Spirit every time we talk to you, every time we sing, every time we give our praise. We ask for that spirit to enter our hearts and our minds, opening our ears to hear the message you have for us today. And Lord, I do ask, may the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
So we know from our last few weeks of experiences with the Israelites that when we're faced with pain and doubt, broken dreams and unmet expectations, times of internal arguing and external fighting, and times when leaders and even God seems to be untrustworthy. And we cannot deny those truths because we've all been there at some point in our life. And as I said last week, and I'm going to say it again, that sometimes we put our faith in the wrong gods and the wrong things, and we get disappointed. So for those of us who left our homes to either go out for college or go out for a new job, or maybe it was from your home to your spouse's home, you left an unfamiliar, or you left your familiar surroundings and found yourselves in unfamiliar territory. Sometimes as you go off to college, I heard the phrase, you're being thrown into the wolves, because not every high school prepares you for college learning. But you had to figure it out. You may not believe this, but I was pretty shy 20 some years ago. I didn't quarrel with anybody that I didn't know. I didn't speak to my elders. I didn't question my elders. And I was scared to death walking on the Iowa campus. I had no idea what I was getting into. Because when they first hand you this syllabus, which again, I didn't know what that was. And you look at the first week of assignments, and it says, read 20 chapters in this book. I said, what? And then you get to the next class, and you have another syllabus handed to you, and it says, read the first five chapters of your statistic book. And technically, according to the professors, it should have been all done before the first day of class. So there's two, I had four classes, my, well I went four classes pretty much every semester. Clarksville, Iowa does not prepare you for that type of work. I didn't find the fact of being thrown into the wolves that literal. I didn't expect to find myself in this wilderness and ask, if God was really among us or not. No, I had to take it head on. And it was hard. It was difficult. I remember going to my advisor in my first semester and I'm literally crying because again, he's an adult and I didn't know anything and I was, I was shy. And he goes, why are you crying? I said, because this is hard. And he looked at me and goes, you are salutatorian of your class. I said, yeah, it doesn't matter. This is a whole new ball game of learning how to study. And I have no idea what I'm doing. Because my familiar territory was don't speak back to the professors, don't speak back to your advisor, you just go with the flow. I wasn't one to question, but I had to learn how to live with a roommate who partied pretty much every weekend. I had to learn and tackle how to study, how to juggle a job. My parents weren't there to speak to the professors like when they have, you know, school, what is it called? Parent, teacher, yeah, conferences. conferences. There was none of that. I had to do that. And yet for some, 
it was hard. And that wasn't only in college. I waited almost 10 years before I went to seminary. And then I had to figure out how to stand up for myself once again. But now I'm in smaller classes with more adults who are old. Well, I'm talking older than me. They were 10 to 15 years older than me. And I had to speak in class. No, Dixie doesn't do that. That was my wilderness. And so, yes, there were many times that I asked that question, is the Lord really with me? Because why did he send me to seminary if I have to do this? And I'm going to guess that there are some sort of memory that you can think of that you had the same experience. And so that's why we are so much like the Israelites. I mean, they were happy to be enslaved. They, had, they were happy for that routine and the food and the shelter and the water. And then God pulls them out of the familiar into the unfamiliar and marched them through the Red Sea. They were heading to freedom. And they saw God lead and they had it in their minds that there was not going to be any more problems. God was going to take care of it all. They were excited. And yet what happened? They complained. And they grumbled. But they also wandered around the desert for years. And they question, is God really here? And so the people continued to quarrel with Moses and Aaron, to which the two of them were like, yeah, don't be throwing stones at us. You're upset at God, not, not us. Go to him. But people wanted Moses to do their work. Now, I don't want to shame anybody today, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but it's very familiar when you're in leadership positions. When any of you are desperate, you want someone to pray for you who might seem closer to God in relationship than you are. So who do you call? The pastor. I mean, it's not a bad thing. It keeps me in business. But when something goes wrong or what you were praying for isn't exactly what you wanted the outcome to be, guess who's the first person who gets blamed for that wrongdoing? The pastor. So I'm going to remind you, it's not us pastors that you're upset with, it's God. Just like Moses and Aaron told the people, you're not upset with us, you're upset with God. Go to him, turn to him. He has done all of this for you and you continue to forget that he is the one taking you to freedom. And yet Moses takes it upon himself and my guess, it was kind of in a grumbling way, too. It says, God, what am I supposed to do with these people? They're about to stone me. And God listened, led Moses with the elders to this rock. I don't know if it's exactly like that. He struck the rock and water poured out. I probably would have looked at God and said, really? Rocks don't make water, God. But God said, you're going to do it. And anything you do in life, I'm going to be with you. And that applies to us. We ask if the Lord is among us or not, especially when there is pain and hunger and 
despair. We ask God if he's really with us when we see the violence and the oppression and the disease. It's not that God's absent. It's that we must go to him and to Jesus, his son, and to the Holy Spirit to enter into those dark places of the world. We know what it's like to be there in those dark places. And when we turn to God, God comes in and he helps lift us up. And so it's no different than all these places that I just explained. If we pray to God to enter those darker places than we have, he will lift them up. It may not be 100% right then and there, but eventually he will provide. Because Jesus has already been there once. He suffered. He bled. He died. He went to hell. He was overcome death. And where bodies are broken, Christ is there. And where blood is being poured out, Christ is there. And where souls are being splashed with flowing water, Christ is there. And where God's word is spoken, Christ is here. And where God's people gather, Christ is here. So the Lord is among us. And he is showing us all the things and telling us all to listen up. So look around and know that God is here and he lives among us. Amen. So let's turn to our hymn of response, number 494, It Took a Miracle. Oh, 
we are inspired to be generous by a generous God, and we are inspired to give by the greatest of givers. So in gratitude to God, let us present our tithes and offerings, and as we do so, when you leave today, put them in the offering tray, and uh, we give thanks for your offerings and your tithes and your generous gift of love and grace. And we thank you and give you thanks. Amen. pray that 
we continue to be united in your one table of communion. And Lord, we thank you for being among us, for being in those mountaintop moments like birthdays and anniversaries, in any celebration that we have, in victories of sports and other extracurriculars. Lord, be in our schools and continue to bless our children. Because Lord, we thank you for your son who came to us and said, let the children come to me. And so as we celebrate this World Communion Sunday today, we thank you for all who have decided to follow you and be in your family. And so we come, Lord, with the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So let us turn to our communion hymn, Worthy is the Lamb, number 303. justice, embracing mercy, and walking humbly with our God. This is an open table, and all are welcome, no exceptions. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and holy and one of the many names and faces we thank for being with us, our Holy One. How the light came out of darkness for the division of the waters and the dry land, for creating the whole planet up and through the cosmos and calling it sacred. We thank you for creating us to live in connection to our love, for the gift of light, speech, and movement, and freedom. Moses revealed your vision and commandments. Your prophets unleashed cries for justice when your planet's bounty was violated. Through the long generations, we have had the most suffering and sorrow, healing and renewal in the most beautiful and impressive times. You still call us as you are full of wonder and awe, O oh God. Your ways are just and prophetic. With all of creation in all times and places and with our brothers and sisters around your planet, 
we sing to you in one voice, Holy, holy, holy God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. Knowing that through Christ all things are made new, we come to this communion table to re be recreated through the bread and the cup and to be renewed in our faith and commitment. So on the night before Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and gave thanks to God. And he told his disciples, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for all of you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, remember me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Holy Spirit, come and sanctify us and your entire church through these holy mysteries. Grant that all who share the communion of our risen Savior be one in Jesus Christ, and may we remain faithful in love and hope until the perfect feast with our Savior in eternity. Amen. The bread which we break is the broken body of Christ, broken for you and for all. The cup of the new covenant that we bless is, is the cup of the new covenant poured out in Christ's blood, poured out for you and for all. For these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready.
And let us stand if you're able and join in our prayer of thanksgiving. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this holy meal, for Jesus and his all-inclusive love for humanity. And thank you for this day, which we worship and serve you. Amen. Let us turn to our closing hymn, The Solid Rock, and we're only going to sing verse 1. It's hymn number 526. Amen. Mm -hmm. 